It was the It was the year 2000 and Saturday Night Live was on the rise. After once again dodging cancellation from low ratings and scathing reviews about the show's decline in quality over the late 90s, the show had defied the odds and made it to season 25. With a new prolific first-year head writer in the form of a young Tina Fey, and a loaded cast featuring Will Ferrell, Tim Meadows, Tracy Morgan, and Molly Shannon, things were finally looking up for the long-running late-night comedy variety show. But on March 11, 2000, things would take a fatal turn. I first noticed a very unusual runtime for the streaming and syndicated version of episode 14 of season 25, which very much conflicted with the broadcast version. Being that Saturday Night Live is live, every episode needs to be exactly 93 minutes with commercials. I became dead set on getting to the bottom of what they had removed. Using my dual format Betamax deck, I was able to digitize the original broadcast version of the sketch which I was able to obtain from the NBC Universal tape library. Now with both versions, I was able to trace the conflict to a specific sketch that had been edited, one involving Regis Philbin. And the new question became, why? What I'm gonna do here is show you the full sketch as it appears on the NBC official website on the left, and on the right, I'm gonna put up the version that had been hidden from the public until now. I'm going to play both recordings in full, simultaneously, and I'm going to stop the playback if anything unique happens in either version. Just a heads up, this is about a five minute sketch, so feel free to pause the video and grab a drink. Anyway, here we go. My name is Joshua Carriage. You're the king. Whenever you're ready, babe. Look, of course I'm ready. Are you kidding me with two hit shows and a big new contract? I'm the man. I've got game. 39 years in the business, ABC is now kissing my ass. <laughs> oh, and to top it all off, Satan is quitting the show! <laughs> oh, I tell you, Gilman, I can't wait to meet my potential new co-host. Absolutely, Rach. We got some great people. Okay. Star Jones! <laughs> Yes, I am Star Jones, and I am a lawyer. <laughs> and legally speaking, I am under contract at The View, but off the record, I can't stand those little bitches. <laughs> I I'd rather work with you, because you cute like that little Lucky Charms, man. Star Jones, you're on a world of pain, sister friend. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Barbara. Well, I watch your step, Missy, or I'll bury you where I buried Matt and Oculus. <laughs> and they'll never find you. Get to step it. Reach, you're back on top. King of the game shows. And a daytime TV veteran of legendary proportions. And spokesman for fake water. You know, you're right, Barbara. This schedule is killing me. You do a daytime show and a primetime series, and you're way older than me. How are you doing? Well, I don't smoke. I don't drink. And I don't have a human circular toy system. <laughs> Good luck. Somehow, Gilman, that doesn't surprise me. All right, who's next? <laughs> Janine Garofalo. Ah, oh, there you are. <laughs> Janine Garofalo, you know, you and I would make a very hip team. Uh, I don't know, I'm not really into this whole morning show genre vibe. I hate showbiz. Well, it's very simple, Janine. All you have to do is be yourself and talk about what's going on in your life. So, what did you do this week? Uh, okay, well, uh, I filled in for Letterman, then I did Politically Incorrect, uh, Larry King, The Craig Kilborn Show, Martin Short, uh, a photo shoot for Jane Magazine, the Aspen Comedy Festival, a Penn Stiller movie, an episode of The Sopranos, Love Line, uh, The List, The Daily Show, Charlie Rose, another Penn Stiller movie, and I played a chain-smoking camp counselor on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, then on Tuesday... Gilman, the girl can't say no! Yeah, uh, I got 
gonna go one extra down, because then I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> You know, Gelman, she's a nice girl, and she's very pretty, but she should comb the hair once in a while. <laughs> right again, Rich. Don't worry, this next guy's gonna be perfect. Hey, Rich's down here. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the Donnie and Marie show. It's the best thing I've seen since Mike and Maddie. Well, I heard you were looking for somebody. Believe me, I know what it's like to work with a host show with a sugary Christian woman with a big smile every morning. Someone you really can't stand. Someone who's a little bit country and a lot bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you're my kind of kid. I wish I could help you. But two dudes hosting the morning show? This isn't Good Morning Frisco! <laughs> Sorry. Reach, I just need a hug. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? I think it's time for you to show me some magic. Okay. This next one is going to be good, Reach. Darva Conger. Darva Conger, the former Miss Rockwell. How the hell did you get in here? Regis, if you feel that I am the perfect co host for you, I will be your friend, your lover and your partner throughout whatever life has to offer us. We'll have joy, maybe a few tears, but more ups than downs, and it will never be boring. You know, Darva, I'd like to hire you. Officially, under New York State law, you're a hooker. <laughs> Did you catch it? So after Anna Gasteyer leaves the frame, we see Daryl Hammond's mouth clearly moving and then an awkward jump cut to Chris Kattan, his mouth also moving. But we can't hear what either of them are saying. It turns out they're actually using a previous take of Kattan as a patch and muting the audio to take us immediately out of the sketch, hiding the original broadcast's very special guest star, Chris Rock. Let's watch. Hilarious. I got a surprise for you, Reach. Chris Rock's here. Chris Rock, now we're talking. Where is he? Man, oh man, read this book. <laughs> I see who wants to be a millionaire, and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right. <laughs> Not a lot of black folks on the show. Know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. <laughs> oh, they want to be millionaires, but you got to ask that kind of question. Like, in 1981, how many grams of crack did Rick James smoke when he recorded Super Freak? <laughs> Regis, do you think the only way to get a brother on the show is to name it, who wants $50 cash and a pair of poopers? Chris, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're terrific. Would you, would you consider teaming up with me? Well, you, you kidding? I ain't waking up at 7 a.m. to fake laugh at some cruise ship stories. What the hell? Are you sure? Yeah, and that's my final answer. <laughs> now I knew what they were hiding, but I still didn't know why. Hired in 1990 alongside Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider, David Spade, Chris Rock was known as one of the bad boys of SNL, and one of the most beloved cast members of all time. I just didn't understand why they would hide such an anticipated return to the show. If I wanted answers, I needed to reach out to the man himself. And so, I did. But reaching out to Rock directly opened up a shocking twist. Cross-checking with his manager's calendar revealed he wasn't even in New York on March 11, 2000, on behalf of being swamped in production for Louis C.K.'s 2001 feature, Pootie Tang. So, do you have any girlfriends at school, Pootie? Uh, Mama D, there's a sign, Tiffany in a classic. She's a cold Tony. Don't you talk dirty to your mama, boy. Always got your head in them girls. You need to have your head in the books. Leave the ladies alone. 
So, if it wasn't Rock, who was pretending to be Rock? I booted up headshots of all 14 repertory and featured players from Season 25 and attempted to solve who could be portraying our coveted John Doe. As the impression was very convincing, I began with the cast members who most resembled Chris Rock. Unfortunately, I wasn't having any luck. Just as I was prepared to completely give up, I ran the entire cast through some advanced color correction technology, and what happened next was shocking. I found a match. Chris Rock was actually Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon in blackface. With modern sketches like 2019's State Meeting, it's hard to forget about Saturday Night Live's own complicated history with blackface. But erasing that history from history will never clear the air. 